Hey guys, welcome to macOS user interface design tutorials. In these videos, I'll be showing some of the most basic customizations on user interface that can be achieved using Xcode 8 and Swift 3. Um, in these uh, tutorials, I assume that you have some basic knowledge of programming on OS X and um, Cocoa, but uh, please feel free to um, leave any questions in the comment section if you um, don't understand. In this video, we'll be talking about how to create your own close button using a series of uh, mouse tracking area delegate functions. As you can see on my desktop, I have three images. This is uh, the normal um, mode, this is the highlighted mode, and this is the press mode. And these are three images that are required to, um, to create um, your own close button. Um, I have actually used this button in one of my apps. As you can see, um, the top left corner this is a close button. If my mouse moves over here, uh, you, see, you can see the cross. Um, if I press down, you can actually uh, see that it's the pressed um, image. After I um, lift up, if I drag my mouse um, outside, it restores to the default state. And if I click and I release my mouse inside this button, the app closes. So this is the app that we'll be making today. Um, let's uh, go ahead and create a new Xcode project. Let's call this uh, close button. Cocoa application, close button. Um, make sure you uh, choose Swift and don't click any of these. And then we can continue and create our project. For those that are familiar with um, the Xcode developer interface, um, this is the main dot storyboard, which is a file that um, it has all of the interface um, appearance here. Uh, there are two main uh, parts of this file for a default um, main dot storyboard. Um, it has a window controller, which uh, is the controller responsible for the appearance and behavior of the window, and this is the view controller, which is responsible for the behavior and appearance of the view. Because we are trying to create a new button, it will definitely be part of the view. So let's uh, let's drag a new image button into the uh, into this app, and that will become our new button, close button. Uh, I'll just manually resize it so that it's seventeen point uh, to seventeen, and then let's put it somewhere here, and that will be the position of our close button. Okay, so next we need to actually import these three images. There is a normal highlight and press. Let's select all of these and drag them into the assets, the XC assets. This will automatically um, include these files in um, the product, which is part of the app bundle. You can see these are three images are here. So by default, let's set this image to the pressed one. Oh, sorry, to um, the normal one because usually. Um, this image should not be uh, showing the highlighted mode unless your mouse moves over. And there's a bit of lag. Okay. Okay. About about there. Yes. So now we have this um, button here, and um, we need to uh, delete or remove the gray window bar so that we can review this button here. By default, this button will actually appear somewhere over here because without um, a full-size content view, this part of the screen cannot be used as part of the content view. So we need to uh, select this and click full-size content view. This means that uh, the view can now go behind these um, uh, these items, these uh, standard window buttons, and behind the uh, title bar. However, we also need to remove this title bar and these three buttons because if they are here, then they will basically hide this button here. So to do that, we need to create a new class for this window controller and do some customization. Let's go to File, New, and New File. Choose Cocoa class. And then here, uh, make sure that uh, it is a subclass of NS window controller. Let's just call it window controller. Hit Next, and then Create. This will create a brand new file here with um, a basic function given called override font window did load. This function um, is run every time uh, a window of the type window controller 
is initialized and it, it will be run before the window is displayed um, to the users. So if you want to customize your window, this is usually the place that you do it. So um, there are a few things that we need to do. First, uh, we need to hide the title bar. Second, uh, we need to hide all the standard window buttons. Okay, so to do the first step, we just need to type one line of code. Window dot title bar appears transparent. And we set that to true. If the title bar is transparent, it means that it is hidden. The next step uh, is to uh, hide all the three window buttons. Let's do them one by one. The red button is the close button. So we will say window dot standard window button, close button is hidden is true. Okay, so this line will hide the close button. And if you're lazy, you can just copy and paste the code, except you, you need to change this button to the two other buttons. The orange one is the miniaturized button, and uh, the third one is the zoom button, which corresponds to the green one. So now we have hidden all three of these buttons, and we have made uh, the title bar uh, invisible to the user. I save this file, go back to the main storyboard, and set the class of this window controller to the one we just created. Now we can actually run the app and see if the window bar um, behaves the way that we uh, would like it to. Let's not worry about the tracking area right now because we haven't designated any, any function to this yet. Okay, yes, this is exactly the way we want it to be. So um, now the title bar has disappeared. Uh, there's the title which is still there, but the title bar the gray bar has disappeared and all of the three default buttons have um, vanished as well. We just have this new button that we have created here. And uh, now let's let's do the um, tracking area function so that when our mouse moves over, it will actually display a different image. To do that, we need to subclass this as button as well. Let's, let's call it a uh, close button as our new class. Close button. Uh, to subclass it, we need to uh, make sure that the subclass is an NS button because this close button is technically an NS button. All right, so now we have our new file here. So what we are going to do is uh, we should delete this because um, the, by default, it gives you the draw function, which we're not going to need because this function uh, is going to run every time the view is about to update, and we don't need to update the views so frequently. However, what we need to do is to add a new tracking area for this uh, for this uh, close button at the time that this app initializes. So what we do is um, we use the override uh, func awake from nip. Awake from nip is a function that runs every time uh, something gets initialized. In this case, we're trying to initialize a new NS button of the type close button, which this uh, this file defines. And then um, this code will only run once uh, when our app uh, begins running. So here we're going to add a tracking area so that um, this button is now responsive to mouse actions, such as mouse hovering, mouse exiting, mouse entering, etc. So let's have self dot add tracking area. And if you don't want this to look so complicated, you can you can let a new tracking area. Area is equal to NS tracking area. It has the default function here. So rect is uh, content uh, rect, which um, this tracking area will be covering. And here we have self dot bounce because this is a place that we want the mouse to be um, tracked. The op options. This is basically which type of action should the tracking area track. In this case, we only need um, a few. Uh, we only need the tracking area to be able to track mouse entering, exiting, and we also want this to be constant. Like any time the mouse enters, we should be able to track it. So by default, we have a tracking area options, and then we have the raw value one twenty nine. If you go to the Apple's documentation, you will find out that each option has its own value. For example, one or two or four or eight, and when they combine. 
if you add them together, they will form a unique number that identifies the number of um, and which uh, tracking area options you have ch uh, chosen. In this case, I've chosen the ones that sum up and equal to 129. I don't actually remember which ones they are, but I just remember the number. So uh, if you just need to have the functions that I'm going to show in this tutorial, then all you need is 129. Okay, so owner is basically self. You want um, this class to be responsible for um, the delegate functions, and we don't need any user info. So now we have the tracking area. Let's self dot add tracking area tracking area. Okay, so now we have this tracking area set up for this view, this close button. Now we need to um, add a few functions that make it responsible for um, mouse actions. For example, uh, let's have uh, let's have this um, plan. First, if the mouse enters. Um, the image should automatically become uh, automatically become the, the cross one, right? Second, if the mouse uh, exits, the image should uh, be the normal button. Oh, it's an image. And also, if the mouse uh, Mouse is uh, is pressed down. It should display um, the image that is pressed. Sorry, I made a typing mistake. And then uh, when the mouse is inside, um, if the mouse is um, is released. The image should uh, either be uh, highlighted or um, normal, depending on where the mouse is uh, released. So release means that you simply uh, uh, release your mouse so that it is no longer pressed. In this case, we have two scenarios. If the user dragged um, the mouse from inside this button to outside the button and then lifts up the mouse, then it should display the normal image. But if the user's um, mouse is inside the view and then release the mouse inside the view, then it should trigger the function, which is to close the app, and the image should uh, be the highlighted image. All right, so let's, let's do these one by one. So if the mouse enters, the image should be the highlight image. Um, there's a function called um, over, uh, override func mouse enter and in here we're just going to say um, self dot image is equal to ns image named highlighted that will basically give us this image called uh, highlighted which is this one and then for the second one if the mouse exits the image should be the normal image so we have override func mouse exits, and we have uh, self dot image is equal to this image named uh, normal. For the third one, we have mouse press, and when the mouse presses down, there is no doubt that this image should definitely be the pressed image. So we have override func uh, mouse down self dot image x equal to ns image uh, named press. The last one is a bit complicated because uh, we need to determine whether the user has lift up their mouse uh, from inside the image or outside the image. So to do that, we need to actually set uh, a boolean variable. Let's say uh, we name it mouse is inside false. By default, it's false because um, we assume that when uh, the app initializes, the user's mouse is not right where the image is, where this button is. So when every time the user enters their mouse, we need to set this variable to true. Mouse is inside is true. And every time the user exits, we're going to make it uh, mouse is inside is equal to false. This way, um, we always know whether the 
mouse is currently inside the view, uh, the close button by accessing this uh, boolean. So now, um, when we have the mouse's release, um, it triggers a function called uh, mouse up. So when this function uh, is is run, we need to do um, an if statement. If mouse is inside, then we simply just just um, quit the application. And it's application dot shared dot terminate. This um, this action will simply quit um, the current app. Otherwise, we should uh, make the image the normal one. So self.image equals to uh, is image name normal. I don't know why this, this pops up. It, it, sh it shouldn't need to pop up. OK, so now um, we have all these four functions defined. We can save this uh, file, go back to our main, and then select this button and change the class to close button. Now we can run the app and see if this works. OK, let's see. First. If the mouse moves over, it displays the uh, the cross one, which is the highlighted image. And then when we press down, it displays the other image, which is the pressed one. If our mouse exits, it, nothing happens. But if we press down and we release the mouse, the app closes. The app has terminated, as you can see here. So uh, we have successfully developed uh, our own close button using uh, a subclass called close button in this tutorial and um, this is combined with the usage of um, a customized window controller class which disables this um, gray title bar along with the three standard window buttons so that we can actually review uh, review this um, standard window button which is located um, underneath the standard title bar so I hope you enjoyed this video and and hope that you learned something new and thank you for watching.